Welcome to I Lecture Online. Now let's talk about the kinetic energy of a gas molecule. Now, that's sometimes poorly understood, and there are some quantum mechanic effects we have to take care of. But first of all, let's go to our regular equation for kinetic energy, which we know to be 1 half mv squared. So true enough, we have a gas molecule that's moving in three-dimensional space, the kinetic energy will be one-half mv squared, where the v, the velocity, is the root mean square velocity. We'll see a little bit more about that. But that only applies to the translational kinetic energy, the kinetic energy due to its moving quite fast through the air, so to speak, or being part of the air if it's an air molecule. So we can say that a molecule moving through the air in a translational direction, moving it's moving from one place to another, that means it has three degrees of freedom. It can move in the x direction, the y direction, or the z direction. And because of that, for each degree of freedom, it has a certain amount of energy at the quantum mechanic level, and that energy is one half kT. So it purely depends on the temperature and some constant. Well, the K here is derived from taking the gas constant and dividing it by Avogadro's number. It's essentially the gas constant for a single molecule instead of the gas constant for a whole mole of molecules. So therefore, if we take the gas constant for a mole of molecules and divide it by Avogadro's number, the number of molecules in a mole, we now get the gas constant for a single molecule. So therefore, a degree of freedom is equivalent to 1 half k times t, that's in joules, and since it has three degrees of freedom in the translational sense, the translational kinetic energy of a gas molecule can also be said to be 3 halves k times t. So all you need to know is know the temperature of a gas, and you'll know the translational kinetic energy. But that is only good for sure for monatomic molecules and even diatomic or triatomic molecules also have the translational kinetic energy but if you have a diatomic molecule you also have rotational motion in other words a molecule can rotate vertically like this if it's a diatomic molecule and it can rotate horizontally like this that gives it two more degrees of freedom that's a total of five degrees of freedom so the total kinetic energy for a diatomic molecule is actually 5 over 2 kT. Now, what if you have a triatomic molecule? Well, now things get a little bit more complicated because it does depend upon how the triatomic molecule is, is uh, shaped, and it does have additional degrees of freedom, but if you start testing different gases, you'll see there's some differences between different triatomic gases, so they're not purely as, as you would see here to be 7 over 2 kT. They typically have about another 2 degrees of freedom depending upon their shapes. So you could say, for simplicity, that triatomic molecules with 2 additional degrees of freedom, 2 additional motions they can have because there are now 3 molecules there, uh, 3 atoms in a molecule. And so you could say that for triatomic molecules the total kinetic energy can be 7 halves kT. But if we're only talking about the translational kinetic energy, for every molecule that will always be 3 halves kT. Now that's important when we also talk about different thermodynamic processes and the heat capacity of a gas which depends upon how they can store heat and depending upon how they move they can store different am amounts of heat and we'll talk about that in a future video. But at least now we have the concept of the kinetic energy of a molecule straight and this is how it's done. 